Once upon a time, two friends joined forces to bring you the best in horror entertainment. Brian from the north, Tim from the south, each bringing their own unique perspective to the horror community. Movie reviews, Blu-ray releases, beer pairings, games, and more. Welcome to your new home for horror. This is Civil War. Hey there, everybody. Welcome to episode 242 of the Civil Gore Podcast. I'm your host, Tim. And this is Brian. And I, it feels weird, Tim, I have to say, to be looking at a rundown that's like our normal rundown for so long. I, I think what was the last time was Mad God was the last movie we did. It was what was it back in like June? I yeah, think we... it's been literally been months and it was weird because I was looking at the rundown you sent over and I was like, what is this? A beer pairing? I know. What did... Fan topic foo? What is this? And I was like, oh, oh, yes. We used to answer questions from listeners. Mm. I, I almost forgot about that. Yeah, the beer but... pairing I remembered, I forgot fan topic foo. It was funny when I did the beer pairing. I'm like, I know we, we were retooling the, you know, the, the trivia thing, the game part. Uh, we haven't figured that one out yet, but uh, so that's not here. But I'm like. I, I kind of remember something else being on our episode <laughs> that I scrolled down. I saw it. I'm like, oh, yeah, fan topic foo. That was good. And we actually had uh, some that we didn't uh, answer yet from uh, – I think we have still a good uh, few from Cody and uh, David McHugh in there. So, But we actually, if you're listening, send us some more because we're going to run low eventually. Yeah, we need and some more. Pe- I, people seem to like that segment, so I'd hate to like end it. Yeah. The lack of questions. I like that segment too. I always look forward to it. Yeah, you know, uh, it's it's kind of fun. You guys may hear me differently tonight. Uh, I'm trying a little experiment because the uh, with the new house we don't have any carpeting where I record in Civil Gore Studios. It's just hardwood and like shelving. So I just noticed that the sound quality and I, I should have done something about it earlier, but it, there's just this echo that was driving me insane uh when i listened back to the episodes which you know it's not terrible but it's it's not where i wanted it to be so i've gone back to using just a headset mic the mic itself is a little bit lower quality but it should not be picking up the echo from what i was testing with earlier Mm. today so i'm hoping it improves the sound quality overall uh because i I just cannot get this yeti mic dialed into this room it's just too echoey you've had yeah for someone who's such a fan of of cryptozoology and the yeti himself you have a horrible luck with these yeti mics <laughs> yes, I mean, yes, the I first have. one died like yeah. in the move the second one now has a nice permanent home and can't figure out how to take out an echo yeah it's like, it's... you just have like horrible luck with the, uh, these yeti mics and they're, they're, and they're so good they're great they're mics. such good mics i mean yeah. my it makes me sound like tolerable actually, well the problem is they're they're almost too good uh because the one we have is the um it's not the snowball. I might. I could try the snowball and see if it's. Oh a yeah, better. you can pull that snowball out of. The snowball is like the the step down. The Yeti's the step up, but it is so sensitive. I mean, you can like if you touch the table, it can pick up the vibration. So you have to do a lot of stuff around it to keep it from picking up absolutely everything, and you have to really tweak it and dial it in. And I just can't get it to to work with this room that I'm in. Did you grab that thing I bought off of Amazon? That like shock holder for it so it not, doesn't rattle a little yeah, bit yeah not yet i haven't done it yet but i need to i, I think what i'm going to do is like as we get some downtime over the holidays i'm going to get the shock absorber thing i'm going to get the screen that's supposed to reduce echo a little bit and maybe try some other things to get it working again but until now this will be a i think this should sound fine to you guys to let me know if it doesn't but i, I think it should sound better than st- i'd rather have a lower like i was telling mike uh i was telling uh brian before the show i'd rather have a lower quality mic Slightly lower quality mic with no echo than a high quality mic with echo. So hopefully you yeah. guys agree. Well, plus, we, as we all know and said this many a times, till, Tim's dulcet tones fight through anything and they always remain <laughs> dulcety under under the best and worst conditions. Well, so. it was making it a, a nightmare to edit too because it's so sensitive, especially with the echo coming around, that uh, it, I was having to do so much like noise filtering and stuff every time I edited it. And I was like, this is, this is just getting like to be way too much work to try to get this mic to sound decent when I really shouldn't have to fight it that hard, you know? So, yeah. but anyway, uh, so hopefully you guys are, uh, think this sounds a little better than that echo, uh, sound, but we have a great show tonight and I guess we'll start things off with something I haven't been able to say in a long oh time. Oh my God, I know. This is our first chop. <laughs> All right, Brian, so as you know, one of the reasons the show is late this week is because I went to Charlotte to my dad's big annual Halloween birthday party. Uh, he is uh, 70 years old this year, 
God so bless this is going to be a big one. Yeah. And Tim, Tim's Tim's dad is super cool, by the way. I, got, I, I remember I was having a beer, we were having beers and chatting with him at uh, at, at Kevin's wedding. So. Yeah, he's a he's a huge Halloween fan. Uh, I, there's no doubt in my mind that some of my love from horror comes from his side. Uh, cause he's some, always, yeah. it's, gotta, it's gotta be more, like, it's gotta be I'd most, say 75 yeah. to yeah. 85%. Easily. Yeah. I mean, I, I have to give my mom some credit for letting us rent horror movies back in the uh, VHS days. That's uh, true. And she did get you that book or something, right? Yeah. Yeah. Book. So she, she, got, yeah. she, she fostered it, but I knew uh, dad planted the seeds. So he's always been a big Halloween fan. Uh, he's got a nice piece of property up in, uh, Mount, the Mount Holly area. And so every year he throws a big Halloween party. Uh, slash birthday party because his uh, his birthday's on the fifteenth, and uh, this year uh, we always have like a DJ and catered. I mean, it's a big deal. We probably have you know anywhere from fifty to hundred people show up. This year uh, we decided to do a haunted hayride. So he, uh, like I said, he's got a lot of property, so he has woods that you can go back into. Plenty of room for a hayride. And uh, he has actually put went out there and put animatronics out in the woods, props, uh, you know, dummy heads, and uh, he built an entire cemetery out there with gravestones nice. and fencing. He's got lights out there and everything. Yeah, he so, like, he like he like almost like gets up to what he's like almost one of those like. I wouldn't go as far to say as 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 like a regional theme park haunt, but he's like the level just under that I think right from what the pictures I've seen like that level of of. Yeah, he's got a lot of a lot of props. So, but, but what he did this year is he needed people to go out there and scare the hayride riders. So I volunteered to go out there. So I got to be a scare actor for a little bit and, and nice. hide out in the woods for about an hour and scare the people coming by on the hayride. Which um, which yeah, you did to... not record, by the way, for us. For I the... should. I know. I didn't even think about it. I guess I was just so you know yeah. caught up in it. I didn't. I didn't even oh, think about recording it. Speaking of that, we still got to release our videos from uh, Howlow Scream. I got to get those yeah, over there. Yeah. I forgot before. Try and get those so you have something before the end of the month to enjoy. Yeah, yeah, those are those are awesome. But anyway, it, it was a great time. We we hit out, hit out in the woods and jumped out and scared people. And um, you guys saw my uh, costume uh, of the Shining Twins. I mean, Olivia. <laughs> Which... Yeah, that that got a lot of funny responses. Like, it, of all things, it like the two biggest responses it got were were people that like are in the industry, and that was like Emily Sweet and Laura Marie Taylor. <laughs> both both had funny comments about your your costume on uh, yeah, Instagram. I can't wait to. I'll I'll, I'll have more pictures of it because when I'm going to dress up like that for Halloween, obviously. So when we're going uh, trick or treating and stuff, it should be pretty funny. Uh, to see yeah, some of the reactions. Yeah, and they they it was it was it's Tim and Olivia were dressed up as the Shining Twins, and they Cone wanted me to dress up as uh, to ride by in a little tricycle. Yeah, uh, apparently, <laughs> the, the even perfect. though that would have been a long drive just for that that bit. But uh, <laughs> but uh, it was fun. Drive. I won the I won Dad's costume contest. So nice. uh, it's an Im- it's an impartial contest. My dad decides. So. I know. I was gonna say you the way you worded it. I'm like, well. That's easy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, the thing is, though, he didn't have a lot of people come dressed up this year, which oh, usually, okay. usually he he mandates it this year. He didn't require it uh, costumes. So, like when we came in, like ninety percent of the people weren't dressed up. So the costume contest, I knew I was going to win, uh, nice. especially for the adult costumes, because mostly you know the kids were running around in kids' costumes, but not a lot of the adults were dressed up, which also made it incredibly awkward since I was the only adult male running around in a dress or yeah. actually any kind of costume whatsoever yeah so. well, you, you you wore it proudly too you, know? <laughs> you, you get you no one ever doubts your horror cred and after that they need to to understand the dedication you you have to the craft yeah and i, and I will never stop dressing up like i think that's i mean come on one time a year you get to really truly be a kid is how yeah. i think so why not why not go crazy and do something and i like doing things that make people laugh I, i'm not i've never really I've never, when I look back on all the costumes I've ever done, I've never really done anything that was trying to be scary, you know, except for like when I was a kid and I was Dracula or something. But as an adult, it seems like all my costumes tend to go f- towards the funny side. So I don't know. That, I guess that's just how my mind works. I, I kind of prefer that. Yeah, I'm waiting for your um your your like crossover slash hybrid costume, the one we're always joking about in our text feeds. You know, where it's like you take two characters and put them together i yeah. know i know you have some good ones in you there but uh. yeah one of the best ones i saw was a freddy uh freddy mercury freddy krueger 
mashup, oh and that it was have been great. It was split completely down the middle. So the guy was completely Freddie Mercury on one side and completely Freddie Krueger on the other. I mean, like he had the white tank top, but it was cut down the middle and had the red and green sweater on one side. <laughs> it was so cool. Um, uh, so oh that that'd be, that'd be an idea, but yeah. So nice. that was it. We had a great time. It was unfortunately it was um you know we we usually go to that Hickory Grove haunted trail when we're up there. We just didn't have time. We were so exhausted by the end of the party. It was going to be a, it was going to literally add another two hours probably before we got back to the hotel if we did the the haunted trail. So we the kids were exhausted. So we were like you know what let's just call it. We're not going to do it. Um and it was just a, it was a weird trip this year because uh, we couldn't go up on a Friday uh, because of Anna's school. So we ended up having to do like a quick, what we call a turn and burn drive up to Charlotte on Saturday, turn right around, come back Sunday. So it was a really tight schedule. So unfortunately I just didn't have the time to really um, do all the haunt type stuff that I wanted to do for the show. But yeah, you know, at least I got to see dad uh, yeah, celebrate uh, his important. birthday. And, the and, uh, and we had a, we had a fantastic time, a good chill time with people, yeah. um, had a lot of fun, had a lot of good conversations. So that's all that yeah. matters. Yeah. And when you said turn and burn, it reminded me of a, uh, in uh, rounders remember um uh where he's like turn and the burn yeah when they're playing the co- the co- real turn and burn as i think that phrase originally originated when kevin and i i believe drove up to charlotte went to carowinds and drove back the same day i think was the, the original turn and burn uh that's that's a that's about a three and a half hour drive from here but at the time it was more like four and a half hours because you uh, they put in a toll bypass that shaves off like an hour from the trip. But uh, <laughs> we used to we used to do crazy stuff like that, like come up on a yeah. I mean, usually Saturday, uh, driving up on a Saturday and come back Sunday is not too bad. But do trying to do that in one day, man, uh, it's like yeah. whew. what was that? Remember, like how we met your mother, the way they did the pizza place. They did that for they used to go and they decided to drive to Chicago for one day. Yeah. For- pizza that was like that that's tim stern and burn yeah he, he does it for that <laughs> yeah. um so yeah i i'm actually i don't have a, a haunt uh to talk about but uh i will the next episode oh no actually yeah no the next episode will technically be a round table which i'll we'll get into in a second but uh, i'll probably mention it anyway um on a future episode was um we were doing the lake compounds haunt this weekend which will which will be kind of fun it's new this this thing it's like the phantom falls fest or something like um they used to remember i told you they used to have that epic long house well now they yeah. have um actually four different haunted houses and one has like two paths you can take in malice and wonderland so i guess it's depending on the pill you take or whatever the, <laughs> the, the, the thing and um so you go split so we're and that's an upcharge of five dollars but we're gonna we're gonna buy both you know just so we can get uh, those uh each each path you know i gotta gotta review it you know it's for the podcast i gotta make sure we exactly. get through yeah. both but um but um, what I had in the meanwhile was uh, last week um, our town had a uh, – uh, the town nearby uh, in Farmingdale had like a little like a fall festival kind of thing. And uh, so Julian Obi and I went down there to, you know, t- to check it out because, you know, they had tables and stuff. And so I wanted to give a shout out to this cool guy, uh, Rich, and I, I uh, that I met. He's like – he has this like, custom movie merch. I showed Tim some of the pictures uh, I took from this guy, and he's got some really cool stuff that he like – they hand make. He's got a couple even little like funny like like pop culture references and stuff. And um but they had uh you know, like they had this uh had a, he had a really cool creature uh poster up there. Did I send you that one? I can't remember if I got a picture of that or not. If not, I mean, you go back through and look, and I'll have to go back through and look and make sure. Yeah, I, I don't think so. But he had, like, cool things. Like, he had a thing that, like, a handmade sign that, like, people have now at their weddings on those, like, boards. But it said, here comes the bride. And it was, like, a, uh, but they had a stuck on a Bride of Frankenstein uh, yeah. artwork and stuff like that. So he had really good things. My favorite one, though, is, like, this one. It's a, it's a photo frame. This is family. And it's chunk and sloth in there. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then the other great one he did and right now i think he just does things but i know he says he's working on like you know like uh markets and stuff like this stuff but i think he said he's working on a um like an etsy site soon and a facebook page so i told him to reach out uh to us once he gets that so we can share that information but uh one of the other funny things he had is he has a mommy and me and one of it's norman bates and the other picture is the dead mother <laughs> from psycho <laughs> so he has some really really cool stuff and he actually had some old VHS and Blu-rays and stuff, including uh, Blood Beach, which we had just talked about with 
our good buddy David Weiner. Um, yeah. So funny how those things just end up there. And he also has these like little painted rocks with stuff on it. Like he has the like the the witch mask from Halloween Three is in there. You know, so it's got some really cool things. Um, so yeah, once I get more information, I'll check him out. This is this guy Rich? So hopefully he's listening. Uh, we, I gave him my card, and he said he loves horror podcasts, which is good. Then I wanted to give a shout out to a place I mentioned before, and then Tim has actually been to, which is uh, Elisa's nieces. Uh, that you know, you've been we that was our stop uh, to get some snacks for our road or drive to um, Hall, uh, I almost said Halloween Horror Nights. That would have been some drive. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> New Jersey Horror Con today. Oh, that but I wanted to shout awesome. out because um. Uh, yeah, no, they, this place is incredible. Every baked good. They, they had a couple of, uh, pu- they had a pumpkin whoopie pie I picked up, which was insanely delicious. Um, and, but they do like, they have pumpkin cookies, pumpkin, uh, coffee cake. Like they, they, they definitely, uh, know how to appeal to the pumpkin crowd, uh, this time of year, but uh, you know, among all their other great things. But, um, I don't know if you realized him, but also they're connected to, a uh, place called back in time, uh, which is, is their family's like kind of vintage shop. And um, they did have a whole b- bunch of cool old things that are like, uh, you know, they're sometimes like repurposed. Like they had a pinball table, coffee machine, uh, co- coffee machine, coffee table. They had like a soda machine that w- like with that's like just works as an old fridge now and stuff. So they have some really cool stuff like that. But for fall, they had a whole bunch of Halloween stuff. So in what has now become our most successful post in Instagram history, <laughs> I posted <laughs> That this really cool thing that I loved, and I didn't think Julie would want to get it, but she actually loved it. It's like a, an old lantern, and in it is a snow globe uh, with, like, a witch uh, and, like, in the woods and everything. And what's great is it, it's, mecha- like, I guess mechanical or, was a, for lack of a better word, you just turn it on. It lights up, and the, the snow globe element just constantly goes, so you don't have to shake it or anything. So it's a really cool little like fall decor piece that we we got, and I posted it, uh, you know, and I wanted people to see it. So I, that's why I ended up with a little reel instead of a regular picture. And people like love this thing. Every day we're getting like like after like after like. So which is awesome. Um, but also on top of that, I wanted to shout out some other potential new listeners. Who um, it's funny, one of the girls. Um, which is Jess. She's been there. I, I've met her before. She was uh, when one of the times she was working there. But, you know, it was just more like I think she was at the bar part of it because there's also a bar there, Tim, which was not open when you were there, of course. That mm. little bar yeah. beside they and they do on the, the weekends and Friday nights. Um, but anyway, so she uh, so we, uh, you know, she had uh, helped us at the bar before. So I knew who she was. But her sister was there and her sister's friend. So um, her sister's name is Kristen. So it's Kristen and Jess are the sisters. And Liz is is uh their friend and they all work um you know for between elisa's nieces cobb's corner bar there and and the shop and stuff and so i i remember how it came up but i but we start next thing we know oh i know what it was because uh i think we were i was i mentioned something about um uh with the podcast but but i forgot what like spurred that part but anyway so then we started talking they both said they all said how much they love horror and they had just seen terrifier too and we got into this whole thing and i said oh yeah we were you know well oh that's funny because i you know we have a horror podcast so they um so they they gave them all the cards and they thought they were all excited so i want to give them a shout out to go there visit them but also especially jess actually has a she makes these amazing stickers that she hand draws and she has a uh, it's a whole page that's called Jess Lask Designs. That's J E S S L A S K Designs, and um, you could what you can do is you can uh, on, on her um, Instagram. That's what I just gave you. You can uh, she has a link tree, and you can see all her other Etsy shops. And she does a a whole bunch of cool hand drawn stuff. And like she she's done stuff for the bakery that looked that literally looked photorealistic. This cake one she made looked exactly like the cake it was trying to be but she has some cool little halloween things like she has one that says it's like a little ghost sticker and it says you're you're beautiful stuff like that so it's like you know it, it she's got a lot of cool uh really well done handmade items so so check that out too so hope you uh my three new horror friends over there hope you uh got to listen and you heard your shout out there and yeah so but definitely check out uh jess glask designs and i guess tim we can put the uh in the show notes too the link yeah so check out her sure. cool like especially because she's got some cool seasonal stuff cool um i guess the next thing we want to just remind everyone too is that if you have not yet ordered in search of darkness part three or if you want to grab all three of them um you remember you have till midnight halloween 
uh, this year. So October 31st, 11.59 p.m. is the last minute you could possibly order these. Yes, and I, according- I've been waiting for this day, Brian, because yeah. I did not order the first two. I was waiting for the whole uh, – after the second one came out, I, I didn't order the first one. And then when the second one came out and I knew there was going to be a part three, I was like, yeah, I'm going to wait. And this is now my chance. I'm going to get all three of them with the slip cover case and all the, all the good goodies. So I've, I've been waiting for this day. Yes. Yeah, so now you can have it. And um, yeah. And, and according to David, it does not seem like these will be sold again. No, so, it sounds pretty final here. So, yeah. So you probably want to um, kind of like, if you really want these and I, I don't know what horror fan would not want this absolutely like i mean bad it, it, it's hard enough to say like like that you know how to, to say like which one is better because they're all like three of the best horror documentaries you'll see and i haven't seen the third one but i can tell you that for sure because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's how good they are and uh, it's just especially if you're you're our age i mean and maybe the younger horror fans don't get the cool nostalgia feature of it but they still will learn a ton about old 80s horror which they probably always hear about uh, just in discussion. So if yeah, if you guys um you have um to go so just go on eighties horror doc dot com and uh and grab your your copies because it, it what's nice is too they added um like I had the first two already and I ordered the third one but they also came out with a, an extra case I could order to house all three if I wanted yeah, so which yeah. is nice too so cool. Uh, the final thing we have here is uh, an episode I'm super excited about. We always love our roundtables. Uh, we've done; uh, they've been obviously proven to be very popular, especially when we have our good friend Emily Sweet on. So she's coming uh, along with our regular Ken and Cone uh, for the uh, Halloween Ends roundtable. And boy, is this one going to be lively! I. Th- I think yeah, we, I think this this the, one. I mean, if you know, unless you've been like avoiding the internet altogether, um, this yeah, this this movie is polarizing to 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 say the know, least. To, yeah, to say the least. I, I mean, it is you. I literally you scroll through and I either I see like just constant arguing back and forth. Like the last time I remember seeing this seriously was like I think the Last Jedi, um, yeah. with this kind of level of like. People love it. People hate it. People love it. People hate it. Some people are in the middle. Some people are, yeah. But um, yeah. To me, to me, I'm gonna not gonna say anything about it yet, as I, I posted, um, because we want to save this for the roundtable. But I know we we've, we've had slight discussions amongst we've ourselves. We've had internal discussions, yeah. but so yeah. Um, but yeah, that that's gonna be a fun, fun episode. I think that's. I'm so looking forward to that. That's coming out. Yes. I think we're recording on the 24th. Yeah, so, so that probably the I guess the thirty first. Oh, that might be. Ooh, that will release it for Halloween. Oh, how there perfect you go. is that? That yeah. that you can't ask for more perfect than That'll that. That'll okay. drop on Halloween. There you go. So yeah, awesome. so as just as Halloween ends, we'll be talking about Halloween ends. Yes. <laughs> perfect. I yeah. love it. I love when the, yep. love it when a plan comes together. I right and like see we're we're making plans already. We're a pretty good team. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What did I say that the other day? Oh, I, I reversed it when I said, "See, we're wasting money already." <laughs> we're wasting money already. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that was because we, yeah, we, we, uh, yeah, we were. Me and oh, Brian are we, buying we, toys. We're buying. Yeah, toys. I, I, which is sitting right next to me. Julie moved it from the room. I haven't opened it yet, but or my new hundred inch projector. I have got the same Tim one. Tim tricked it's, me into to buy. It's it. sitting in my. <laughs> it's sitting in the foyer. Actually, we can blame Shutter because they were, which we 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 thanked on the line, but uh, online, but not on an episode yet because we had no chance, but. They sent this great box, and it had a little, like, mini projector in it. Yeah. So, of course, Tim and I are like, well, now that we have a projector, we need a proper screen. Yeah. And we got lucky that, I have to say, for 40 bucks for a 100-inch portable screen is not bad because we got it on Prime Day. That thing's normally $120. Yeah, we got it, so. we got it like, on sale plus a $20 coupon thing. Or something. Yeah. Or prime yeah. Because it was like it was like yeah, it was like half off. I was like for forty bucks. I don't off. care if the thing. No. If yeah. I, use I mean, it, I, you know, five times yeah. and it breaks. I don't know. I don't care. I just. I want. I mean, it's worth a shot. <laughs> Except I don't know. Look at your box. It might not be portable. Because mine says it's portable. <laughs> <laughs> That's what. You, oh, well. it's a protable projector. It's a protable, with stands. whatever that means. Yeah. Yeah. Is yours protable? I don't know. I I'll have to go to look. I'll have to check. I love when like quality control is just so bad. <laughs> Mine <laughs> says fragile, so it must be Italian. Oh yeah, it must yeah. be Italian. <laughs> funny you said that because I because I that is the the Christmas story, Christmas, which is thanks to Cone telling us 
the ninth movie about this family. Apparently, I mean, everyone knows most, like, the original Christmas Story and then Christmas Story 2, which was not great. Um, yeah. That other one, um, what was it? The Summer Story. It had two different names. But, yeah, it had my Summer Story and it and something else. It go it went by, too. But, um, it, yeah, that was the one uh, with the, the spinning tops. Yeah, but with, apparently, uh, there yeah, there's been, like, eight – Oh, nine, once this new one comes out, adaptations of Gene Shepard's works of, of that family. So that's crazy. I, didn't, I never knew that. Yeah. yeah, and what I think is awesome about it is that it literally has every original cast member there. You know, I mean, obviously not Darren McGavin uh, because he's passed away. And I it doesn't see Melinda Dillon on the list, but it would not shock me that they're keeping her cameo or something. Well, you like know, the, the thing is, I, you know, I, I was kind of jokingly dismissing it as soon as Cone told us about it, but uh, you know, A Christmas Story is one of my favorite mo- holiday movies oh, of all yeah. time. Mm-hmm. And when I read the synopsis of what this is about, where Ralphie's coming back as an adult trying to recapture Christmas, which kind of sounds a little bit like Christmas Vacation, Plot wise, yeah. it's kind of he's like trying or eight bit Christmas. Yeah, he's like trying to recapture. Like but Christmas. you know what? I was like, you know, this actually could work. This actually could be good, especially with um, Peter Billingsley actually yeah. playing Ralphie. So they're I'm, all playing it. Yeah, like the guy, Zach Ward is back as Officer Scott Farkas in this. So yeah. like you know, he, they apparently is a police officer now from went from bully to police officer. Um, then there's uh, like I even saw like you know like Scott Schwartz is back, RB Rob. Uh, you know the oh my god, there's a okay. Sorry, there's just some giant creature just crawled out from behind my Shutter Advent calendar, and <laughs> like literally as I was moving it, it crawled out. It just went straight up, so I didn't know what happened. I thought the pink painting was falling down because I it, it <laughs> shook when I hit it, but it was because of, yeah. So I don't know this weird. I don't. It wasn't even a spider. It looked like one of those earwig things. Oh my god! But it rains, and so, we're on the first floor, so sometimes stuff comes in. We're an unpredictable show. I don't know show. how to kill this thing. I can't kill it. Um behind the painting right now so that, that'll be a fun thing at least it's not it's in the guest room it's not the room i sleep in otherwise i'd be up all night literally <laughs> no way, waiting for that thing to crawl out i'm not a bug I'll person be uh, but that's why i was like a little star well you'll be happy to know thing. brian i got a tick at my dad's house oh an no actual that, tick. i know yeah. you know i'm terrified of the ticks. yeah i got an actual tick that i had to pull out of my stomach oh yeah. yeah well didn't anna have one in her eye once she said right she near had, her like, eye yeah near her she was eye. little oh, god i would have i would have died uh, I know, we're kind of more and, used to ticks down here, though. Like, yeah, yeah, I mean, well, now Long Island is really getting, like, it's like ticks central, really. I mean, especially out uh, where we are and stuff. Oh, my God, it's terrible. But actually, ever since we sprayed um, this summer, like, they used to be, we used to take Obi out there. We'd li- live be out there five minutes. We'd bring him in. We'd find, like, 12 ticks on him. Oh, gosh. You know, so, yeah. And, and, but he has the, heart, that, the medicine inside, and he's actually got the Lyme uh, disease vaccination. Um what so he like usually most of the time we find him either crawling trying to find a spot or if they bit him they're dead like instantly so it, it's you know it, whatever he had was working about you know it not giving him an illness but you know didn't pre- re- repel them but once it's amazing once we um did the spray in the backyard obi has been out there one time for like th- four hours out in the backyard just running around not one tick on him so nice yeah yeah so yeah whatever spray they used works and i don't know how we got into a gardening program it's so, <laughs> we've gone become... from we went from uh halloween to uh christmas movies to uh gardening and tick spray and yeah. like that, that's and how this bro- show works we broke the horror person's creed of not discussing christmas before <laughs> halloween, halloween did, you know. shame on us I mean, we've just become bad? targets i think it's because we've come the I think it's yeah. because I I finished the horror challenge, so like my mind's already jumping ahead to like Hallmark oh season. God. I should look, at, do look that. at this is yeah. This is why you got to pace out your horror challenge like I do. Yeah. You, you can't let the the the, uh, the holiday sneak in. I finished it in two weeks. What what was I thinking? But I'm gonna I still can. watch horror movies. I still got to watch Deadstream. I still got to watch uh, Last Night in Soho, which I started. No, we have all those screeners. We got to watch tons of so screeners. You got, you got plenty. Yeah, I got plenty. Yeah, you got. Um, but yeah, no, it's like I've said, we've been the, like become the human embodiment of a Target and Walmart now. We're like <laughs> Halloween's not even over yet, and we're we're bringing out the the Christmas items. Oh, Whatever. I think he, I think it was uh, even David uh, Weiner posted today. He did a thing. He says normally I will never discuss Christmas because but but because he you know he posted the Christmas story yeah uh, Christmas uh, uh, 
teaser. I guess teaser. It's, it's, it's only a like teaser. Yeah. Seconds. That's totally a teaser. Um, but it's coming out soon. So, but anyway, so we're back to Christmas, uh, right after I said not to. But anyway, I was pointing out that like how in sync we are with David Weiner because it's the same thing. We like, oh shoot, shouldn't yeah. have talked about that, but. It's kind of, but we can correct it. Like, we we do have a we movie can. to we, correct it because we are we going go right back. And I'll, actually, I'll tell you one thing to bring it all back that we from, right from here, and it's a, a great segue. So, in a summer story, you know who that was one of the stars of that, don't you? I never saw it, so I don't oh, know. I've never seen it. Our awesome buddy who sings kick ass karaoke, Whit Hertford, was the villain kid in that. Oh, cool! I didn't know that. So now you need to go see it right yeah. away. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, yeah, he was he was like the the, vil, the oh that's why when I said tops, you didn't really have a reaction. Yeah, the whole thing about it is like he wants to get instead of the Red Rider thing, it's this the, he he plays these like those spinning tops, you know those things where you would, like mm-hmm. and like that, like one of those things. And so he, I guess, the bully in that is like has like this killer top, and so he's the whole point is he goes to the World's Fair to search for the the best top. I, was like, I, I need to go him. back and just watch all of these. Like, I, all these track them yeah. down. The, some of them are like made for TV movies. I was kind of that, like, that'll be next year's challenge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, get through all <laughs> the, the, Christmas the Ralphie story. Harper family yeah. challenge. Oh, <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, so okay. Anyway, let's let's get let's now now that I we blew our like we were right back. We got to uh, right. We went ship, from to Hertford, yeah. and still it snuck back into that. Uh, uh, yeah, let's let's move from on, on from there because it's I'm going to turn up the heat. Yes. It'll warm us up. It'll get in us the right spirit for this movie. All right. I'm, I'm turning back to my pumpkin spice tea, uh, getting things back into Halloween's, Halloween mode. We are going to discuss this year's reboot, remake, whatever you call it. Not really a remake. It's kind of a reboot of Hellraiser. Yes. Uh, directed by David Bruckner, starring Odessa. How do you spell her? How do you say her I, last name? I think name? it's. Azian is the way I heard someone say it once, but her, her real last name, you know, she's the one. It's like a Adeline combo. Daughters. Yeah, it's like a combo last name. Yeah, right? so she put her name. Yeah, yeah. she made because she wasn't. I she didn't go by this name. She went by I think um, in that. Let's let's scare Julie to death. I think she's credited as Odessa Adlin. Right. Back yeah. Then. So I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Well, we'll to, go with, we'll I think go. I heard someone say it. Azian. We'll go with Maybe Azian. It was on. Um, yeah, because I think it was like a little behind the scenes snippet. I think I saw on Hellraiser. So, so she plays Riley. Uh, of course, Jamie Clayton plays the priest, aka Pinhead. Uh, I put that there, but he, he, she is not credited as Pinhead in this. She's credited as, as the priest. Yes, and I was and reading, really. I mean, that's really what he. Yeah, I think Pinhead was the more lovable nickname. Well, know? I think yeah. And I read somewhere that Clyde Barker hates the name Pinhead. That, that yeah, was never yeah, part of the novels. Or anything. No, that's a yeah. movie. Yeah. name but i mean you know what he is a pin it works for being a pinhead <laughs> as an iconic character but i mean yeah but technically he is the like the priest. head priest or the hot uh, the the i think uh, what did they say in the original hellraiser he was listed as the, the was it the the high priest or was it just the priest i was reading priest? i was reading a little bit about the lore like the priest was just another cenobite he had no leadership qualities at all in the stories oh that's what it says a lead, lead cenobite was one of the the credits yeah I saw it say. but I'm he's like, not really? he's not really the lead in the i mean maybe in the movies but not in the stories uh we got adam Faison as colin drew starkey as trevor brandon flynn as matt oh gosh another uh name i don't know how to pronounce i i think yeah, I was going to say Awafe. Awafe Hines as Nora. Know. Sorry uh, if I got yeah. that wrong. Jason Lyles is the Chatterer. Yinla. Oh, Chatterer's always been my favorite. <laughs> I'm sorry. Thing. I don't know why they're all, all the Cenobites are <laughs> Yeah, the, the Cenobites are hard to say. Uh, Yinla Odo Ranif as the Weeper. Selena Lowe as the Gasp. Zachary Hing as the Asphyx. I think that's a cool name. Uh, yeah. Kit Clark as Joey. And Goran Viznik as Voight. Yeah, he was in uh, Timeless. That show, Timeless. He was like uh, that guy yeah. that was like the guy that first stole the first time machine. Uh, a take on Clive Barker's 1987 horror classic, where a young woman struggling with addiction comes into possession of an ancient puzzle box, unaware that its purpose is to summon the Cenobites. And yes. this one was highly, highly anticipated because oh, I'm guess glad what? you put the little notes because yeah, yeah. There's the, a lot I, of character names, so I was like, you know, I've got to put the notes down of who is what, so I'm talking intelligently. But I'm not. We're not going to give spoilers. I doubt. Because this is fairly yeah, recent. Yeah, it's kind of still recent. Um, but I, I wanted to keep the... There are a lot of characters, and they're like all like very closely related. And, and they're very generic names. So I had, to, I had yeah. to put a little cheat sheet down for us. But uh, yeah, you've got Riley. She's a recovering drug addict. She is living with her brother, Matt. Matt's boyfriend, Colin. And their roommate, Nora. 
and Riley's boyfriend is Trevor. So that's your your assemblage of names there for this movie. But uh, basically, this you know this was highly anticipated because there hasn't really been a good Hellraiser sequel since Hellraiser Part Two, maybe three. If you're stretching it, I, I always like three because I thought that one was cool. That was kind of like I the, yeah. I have a soft spot for three. I mean, yeah. I'm gonna say something maybe a little controversial. I don't think there's any. Don't take this the wrong way. I don't know that any of the Hellraiser movies are like good, good. Like I and I and I say that because yes, Hellraiser. Uh, if you told me which of the Hellraiser movies are good, I would say one and two. But they're not movies for me personally that I will go back and watch over and over like I do Friday the 13th Part 1 and 2, or Nightmare on Elm Street Part 1 and 2, or Halloween Part 1 and 2. They don't fit that mold for me. They're not, like, rewatchable good for me. I'll watch them. i watch them for the horror challenge. Uh, if it happens to be on TV, I'll watch it. It's not one I go seek out. Um, I, I think the subject matter is just a little too abstract for me. Um, now, I loved Clive Barker, uh, in high school and, and even in early college, uh, reading his novels and stuff. I thought, I think he's a brilliant author in terms of horror authors. He's like way up at the top of the list of like the smartest horror authors out there. Maybe the smartest horror author author out there. And I mean, his books are just completely insanely imaginative and brilliant, but that also comes with the territory that they're almost a little too, too high level for me to, to wrap my brain around. So I, I, I tend to go back to the comfort food of Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street, slasher type stuff versus uh, the Hellraiser movies. But that being said, this was highly anticipated because aside from one, two, and possibly three, the other movies have been downright awful. Yeah. I, I mean, we if you guys don't believe us, go back and listen to our summer vacation we did where we went through the entire Hellraiser series, which was a exercise in pain well, <laughs> our suffering it, remember, was indeed they, legendary oh it was well remember we some of the, through through doing that like whole recap we found out like some some of the scripts were literally other scripts that they just said let's throw in pinhead and the Cenobites. yeah and they would throw and, them in, literally throw them in the last 10 minutes of the movie yeah it was, it was so weird there was there was that one there i'm like like you wouldn't have even like yeah if you you watch the first forty five minutes, you might not know what's a Hellraiser movie. Yeah. <laughs> I think there might be a mention of something about, but still, like, yeah, you don't see like I think there was one right. It wasn't until like the the last like yeah, it was literally like the last when... 10, 10 minutes or so that you even see Pinhead and and like the whole you're sitting through this whole hour and a half movie waiting for anything that has anything to do with Hellraiser. Yeah, and I don't remember like. <laughs> The, the ones that were anymore like they, they did this those few in the middle there i like they i felt like they were all the same title uh, there was they, one towards the end that uh, well, i don't think it was the one that had the fake pinhead but had, there was one at the end that was like super <laughs> fake <gore>. pinhead. <laughs> the, <laughs> the right. wish version of pinhead there's yeah. one i feel like there was one towards the end i kind of liked because it was like super gory Super violent. Oh yeah, which one was that one? It was like, I don't re- see, that's what I mean. I was like, I don't remember. I don't now. remember the names. Like, they all had generic names like Hellraiser Bloodlines, Hellraiser Genesis, Hellraiser Hellraiser Deader, right? Yeah. Is the, well, which is the one? One of them they're all defending on. Everyone's defending online all of a sudden. I don't know which one it was. It was like people were like, oh, this is not so bad. Let's everyone give it a rewatch. You'll see or something. I forgot which one though. They were talking. Maybe about. the one I was thinking about. It was fairly. It was like one of the more recent ones. And I thought it was okay compared to the other ones because it was like super, like it was like super gory, super violent. I just remember it. Yeah, I remember there was yeah, there was one that was like yeah, it was like tons of gore. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, this one, this one is is a true, honest to god attempt to make a good Hellraiser movie, and and to a large extent, I thought they succeeded um because you know it's it's got a fairly easy i mean there's a lot of characters but the plot's fairly easy to follow it's not so abstract i mean you've got um you have this rich guy voight who is basically um yeah you know attempting to kind of an overall plan to to get something from the cenobites like he he knows all about this stuff he's the owner of the puzzle box and then uh, it comes into the possession of Riley, and 
the interesting thing I thought about this Hellraiser movie is the puzzle box doesn't have just one configuration. And I don't know how much of this is in the lore or if this was made up for this movie. I don't know. Sorry, I don't know a whole lot about the whole lore. Yeah, well, definitely in terms of like factoids. We're yeah, not, I'm not. Hellraiser is not one of our highest I'm, points. Yeah, I'm not an knowledge. expert. But this one has several configurations uh, that it can be solved. And it's got like, I think there's seven total. So every time you solve it, it takes another victim. And then if you solve all seven, the, you, you get the grand the grand prize yeah. for whatever that's worth it from a Cenobite perspective. Yeah. But that's when 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 like like a Ed McMahon Cenobite comes <laughs> yeah. and delivers you a giant check. <laughs> <laughs> but but it, be, it it was cool because it drove the story forward because you knew okay all right so once once this thing is solved or once somebody grabs it and it gets cut by it that's going to be another victim of the Cenobite. So there's this real. There's a nice structure to it. I like the structure yeah, of it. I yeah. felt like I knew what was going on. I felt like I knew what was going to happen, but not in a like predictable way, more in a like comfort way of like, okay, they got to go through the six configurations and everybody gets cut and blah, 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 blah. So I like that part of it. And the other part I really liked about it is they just put in a lot of freaking Cinnabite action. There's yeah. so little of that in a lot of these sequels where the Cinnabites don't show up until the very end. And I feel weird saying Cinnabites because it reminds me of Cinnabon. I you know I, every time it makes me people like they blend the sin and the sin. And yeah, and I really yeah. it really makes me want cinnamon rolls. But these the cinnabites, um, in most of the sequels have been relegated to the very end of the movie. This one they show up like pretty early, and they're in the movie for most of the movie, which is yeah. astonishing because you don't. That, that's the reason I loved Hellraiser 2, because there was so much of that. You got to see so much of that world. And uh, this one brings all that stuff. They knew what people wanted to see. They wanted to see the cool Cenobites. They wanted to see people getting yeah. murdered by the puzzle box. And that's what this movie delivers over and over and over again. So that's the that's the reason I, I love this one. And I would place it easily, easily above every other sequel except for, in my opinion, 2. I haven't, it's been so long since I've seen three. Last time I watched it was for the Slaycation. I don't remember quite enough about it to say whether I would rank it, but from what I've been reading, most people put this either behind one or behind two. Mm. Yeah, I, I'm, I, like, I'm not even going to try at this point, uh, like, because I don't remember, like, past three, but, um, I you know I th- I liked a lot of the same things you know the, the this, uh reasons you, you know the point you brought up and you know so and here's what I was gonna uh, hopefully I can articulate this the way I want to say it but like so I know it's based on source material and you I know you've read it a long time ago uh, I think Ken says he read it right um so but I'm sure like one of the appeals you know because. I mean, for, you know, I'm sure the Cenobites and all that were cool in the book, but, you know, what made it flashy was the visuals you got from the movies. So it seems like everyone knew they're like, OK, well, based on all the other movies, people love the Cenobites. They love Pinhead or, you know, what the priest, I yeah. guess, in the from the original uh, books. But so it's like, you know, so it's like they really said, OK, well, well, let's just give them what they want for sure and we'll work a, try and re- work a really good story around it and they were able to i think you know i mean they, they kept uh, i guess like well that's the thing i'd love to find out how how accurate it is compared to the book i think was it kenner cone said that it was pretty like faithful to it yeah like even the design of pinhead is more faithful than the original hellraiser <clears throat> like uh, to the book uh, yeah the, the new design so yeah it, it does try to stay more truthful to the source material, which I thought was, was another good call uh, for this. Cause with, with so many, I mean, this was a perfect franchise for a reboot. I mean, you couldn't ask for a better franchise for a reboot. Cause you had just years of terrible, terrible sequels where nobody had really done it justice. And now you have a chance to just come back and do this actual IP justice again. And they, and they largely pulled it off. Like we said. So um, yeah, it, it, I think going back to the source material was a very um, smart decision versus continuing the trend of all the bad sequels, which was basically just to, I don't know, ignore the source material completely. And, you know, you mentioned Pinhead, so we we should probably mention how awesome Jamie Clayton was, even though 
you know, I think she got a lot of flack right from the beginning, right? When she was announced because it was like, why are they casting a female pinhead or something? Yeah, yeah. I, I can't remember the whole, the, the main gripe, but it like seemed like, I'm like, well, but, and you said it was closer to the book description, right? So it was, was it, the, did the, they mention like a gender? No, the in gender's the, in the not in the book. Oh, okay. Pinheads just describe, they're not, they're genderless. They're demon, they're like, they're Cenobites, whatever they, whatever you, right. demon, angels, whatever you want to call them. They're otherworldly beings. They're not man or women. Now, you could argue, I guess you could argue because Pinhead used to be mortal. I guess most oh, Cenobites right, right, right. used to be mortal. Or that you could say, well, then he's, he's definitely a male because he came, he was that World War II guy or whatever, Nazi or whatever. If you follow the lore of the movies. Um, oh, right, but, right, right. You know, Clive Barker gave his blessing to this. So, in my opinion, once the author gives a blessing, you just got to roll with it. You know, whether you like right, it or not. Right. And you know, I, I get it that you you're upset that Doug Bradley, you know, he's the iconic. But if you're going to reboot, this is the perfect time to reboot uh, reboot the character of the priest. And the worst thing you want to do is like they did in that dumb sequel that came out. You know. I don't know how many years ago, but had that, like I said, like the wish version of Pinhead where you had that, that guy trying to be Pinhead who looked nothing <laughs> like him. And it just, it came yeah. off looking ridiculous. So you've got to reinvent, if you're going to do it, if you're going to replace Doug Bradley, then, then go all in on it and just make a completely new character. And I thought the priest in this movie was freaking awesome. It was a different take on the character by yeah. far. I mean, it was not the lordly, you know, deep voiced pinhead yeah. that was like so commanding it was a completely different take it was a more of a creepy yeah. um and to me it almost and, and they altered jamie's voice so that it didn't sound feminine it sounded like a kind of a, a kind of like a almost a d- definitely processed voice yeah it almost like a, it reminded me like it had like a mechanical wisp yeah like yeah it's like but like, you know it, it was really if cool. you think about it these these things are supposed to be otherworldly. They're supposed to be completely foreign. So when you put her look, which was super creepy, I mean, pure the pure black eyes, everything looked, just really worked. With that voice, it did seem otherworldly. It did seem strange. It didn't seem foreign. It seemed creepy. I mean, Doug Bradley, is as good as Pinhead is in the original movies, he does have a lot more humanity to him. I mean, you could tell, you could see the human behind the demon, and that's fine. That's a good, that's a perfectly valid take on the character. But I thought this was probably closer to Barker's original in vision in that these are not, um, you know, these are so far removed from human that they're kind of right. alien. And I, I thought it was a much closer, much closer to that. So I, I, I really liked it. I had no trouble at all. I, I had no trouble at all when they said, you know, if, if it was just going to be a female version of of yeah. Doug Bradley's priest, I would have had probably no problem with it. Um, I'm, I, you know, I'm not into, you know, oh, that's woke. Or, I, don't, I don't care. Just, just, I mean, just, just a choice. Why yeah, can't yeah, people just, just... just go with it? I mean, I, I don't know. I, I don't have a problem with it. So um, I, I really liked it. And I think she probably changed a lot of minds of some of the haters who who initially came out against it. Because after you've seen that performance, I can't imagine there was a, you know, I'm sure there's, there's plenty of people that still hate the fact that it was played by a female and a transgender Mm -hmm. actress on top of it. But, um, I, you know, I, I, I would, I would hope that some minds were changed after seeing her performance because I thought it was excellent. Yeah. And think about it. Like how many times do you say like, you know, well, you don't have to get, um, you know, if you have a choice between the, casting someone you want to like sometimes just go for the best the one who's doing the best job you know don't, don't worry about the you know sex color any ethnicity yeah. anything you know just go for the best for the the role as a best performance so even if they did it that approach you can't knock it because she's that good you yeah. know she really is you know that i i don't know i actually kind of i, I mean maybe it's because we we are the bad taste we were left with the last non Doug Bradley pinheads. But I was actually, I thought I, this one is the next for me, like by far, you know, yeah. it's like, if you're not going to, like you said, if you're not going to have Doug Bradley, 
redo it, you know, re reimagine it. And that, the other set of bikes were cool too. They had some new. I mean, they had the Chatterer was back. Well, yeah, you, you had to have the Chatterer. You yeah, could not have he, it. Yeah, he's he, the creepiest. He's one. He's like man. the best one. So, but even they didn't bring back Butterball. <laughs> yeah, it, oh, yeah, but, but, they, but they, they could be a sequel. They, right? they brought back, but they they brought a lot of new ones in that were super super cool. So I loved all that. Um, yeah. I used to have a. Uh, Back when the, there was a model company called Screamin', they did vinyl monster kits. And I used to have, and they would do these 24 inch ones. They were huge. Uh, 24 inch vinyl monster kits. I had Pinhead, and I think I had Butterball. I might have had the Chatterer. And I built these and painted them. I used to have them in my room. They were super, super cool. I still wish I wish I had those now. Those those vinyl companies have kind of all gone out of business. They got run out by the counterfeiters, and they just don't do them That's anymore. Horrible. But yeah, it was um, they were super cool. The pinhead I was particularly proud of because I had him all painted, and they had actual pins to put in his head. Oh, so that's so it cool. was it was crazy. I probably have a picture of it around here somewhere. Of, of, but that thing was so awesome. Uh, but yeah, they had some. They had cool Cenobites. I was, I was, I was as pleasantly surprised with this movie as I could be for a Hellraiser movie. Because again, yeah. I will caveat it by saying I'm not like a huge, huge Hellraiser fan. Um, I like them. I don't love them. So for me, this movie was probably never going to be on the oh my god, that was the best thing ever you know list. But for what it was for a Hellraiser movie, I thought it was they did a bang up job with it. So I, I actually oh, yeah, enjoyed I know. it. Yeah, same here. We're probably in the same like level of of fandom for Hellraiser. Yeah, but no, it was like I actually when I was done with it, I was like super pleased. You know, I was like, wow, that was really good. It did not suck, and you know, it's like we had so many of those that did. I mean, uh, if, like leading up to it. If you've but, never read any of Claude Barker's other novels, like. Um, and they really cross the line between horror and fantasy, um, like uh, a Magica and the Great and Secret Show. These these novels are so in depth. I don't know how you would even begin to make a movie version of it. And I think that's why you haven't seen movie versions of his works. Really, they are yeah. so out there that I would love to see somebody try it. I'd love to see like a. You know, I'd love to see like an HBO do like a mini series of a magica or the great and secret show. That would be freaking insane, but they'd have to do it. I'll, I think you'd almost have to do it in mini series form because there's mm. no way you could fit those gigantic freaking books. I'm going to have to go back and start rereading Claude Barker. Cause I remember those being so insane when I was younger, I would love to read them as an adult. Uh, mm. And maybe I could make more sense of them. <laughs> I don't the, know. In a good way, though. I mean, they were they were like they were like over my head as a high school student. I, I they're probably still over my head, but I'd like to give it a try. I'd like to give it a try. I you know I maybe I should start reading them because then I can give like a fresh approach. Yeah, try that. if you, yeah, I, I remember one of my favorites was the Great and Secret Show. I had the the paperback and it was like thick. I mean, just huge, just chunky paperback. And they made he made a sequel to that one, which I think was called Everville. If I'm not mistaken. And, uh, but a Magica, I don't know that I ever finished a Magica cause it was this book. It was a, it was a paperback. I swear to God, this thing was like six inches thick. Oh it was God. crazy. I need to go back. I, I, maybe I'll get the audiobook version or something. I don't it's know. It's not like the it, like the it paperback. Oh yeah. It was that like or... that. It was, it was, oh my God. Thi- it, I bet I... you it was thicker than it. I'm going to look up the page count on that bad boy. Yeah. Cause I think, uh, um, like it was like what? 1100 and something. Yeah. This was like that, but it was, I had the, uh. I had the paperback and it was like insane. I don't know if you can get it anymore. Can you? Oh yeah, there it is. The Fifth Dominion Book One. Oh, that's just the book one. The book one is five hundred and forty four pages, but the one I had had all of it. I don't know if you can even get it anymore. Let's see. Obviously you gotta be able to get it. Oh, they got the audiobook. But it's like sixty hours long. Oh my god. Yeah, so book one was 544 pages. Book two is another 544 pages. So yeah, it was well over 1,100, 1,200 pages. And that was, um, I had the book that had both of them in it in one paperback. So it was probably like an 1,100 page paperback book. It was ridiculous. It. But yeah, I may have to get the audiobook of that. I bet that'd be cool. So anyway, uh, yeah, that's Hellraiser. It's uh, definitely well worth your time, especially being on Hulu. 
Um, yeah. Someone yeah. said it was funny. Now, the, uh, Pinhead is part of the Disney family. I saw. Yeah, he's tweet. technically a Disney princess now. Yeah, he's like, so now he's getting, maybe he'll walk around <laughs> during uh, Mickey's not so scary Halloween party. <laughs> oh. Except in hell, you know. Um, so yeah, I, well, speaking of that, Tim, I do have a beer pairing. I want to hear a beer pairing. We haven't had one in a uh, long time. Yes. The beer is actually named Hell, <laughs> and it's from one of the coolest brewery names, like I've heard, Surly Brewing Company <laughs> in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Um, so this beer is oh, you know what? I forgot. Oh no, it it says down below. That's why I didn't put the thing. Um, it's the ABV uh, and it is five uh, percent. So it says Dorit Ansari is from Germany. Omar Ansari is her son. He has a brewery. She wanted a beer that reminded her of home. This is that beer. Almost sounds like a like a movie. I yeah. should have done it in the movie <laughs> phone voice, like like this is that beer. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, but um, it says hell is a pale gold lager, not unlike the Zwickelbeyer's popular in Dorit's hometown of Bremen. It's not filtered and it's brewed with lager yeast. You can expect bready malt aromas and flavors, floral hops, and a balanced finish. And then it says, by the way, the name is a reference to the German word for light. Not Satan's nefarious kingdom, so you don't have to sell your soul for another. <laughs> <Yep>. oh. <laughs> so that's pretty good. I like that one. That was pretty uh, fun. So I guess I've always wanted to go. I need to go to uh, Minnesota anyway because I want to go to the Mall of America uh, and go and uh, get those kosher credits there. But um, so I, it's like if I ever go there, I have to go there. I just love that Surly Brewing Company. Yeah, yeah. that sounds cool. All right. Well, we have a fan topic food question brand new for this week, and it is from our dear listener, Cody. And this is a good one. If you could bring back one horror icon back from the dead for an interview, who would it be? I had a, I had a, what I, I had two answers for this one, but I, I had to pick one or the other. I could, I'll tell you what my runner up was okay. uh, after uh, my, my answer. I have one for you. I, I, I wanted to first give my pick, uh, in, in favor of Tim and I said uh, Shelley Winters because <laughs> so, as we know she she horrifies nope. poor Tim and I would love to interview sat if one on one and on Shelley Winter kind of thing you know she'll be there like a round table and like Tim and I just discuss her fe- you know we'll have her reenact lines to see if it like gets to no, you or not that or would have to be a non video cool? Zoom chat oh darn it okay never mind <laughs> um uh, <laughs> but no um. I, you know, I don't, this is a tough one because, you know, so many of the horror icons we've discovered, like, after they were dead already, you know, so it's like, uh, I don't. I had a good one if you, if you want to think about it. Well, I had one, and you're going to laugh why. It's a, part of it is I want, I want, uh, it would say Bella Lugosi so he can come out. We can see how much he does sound like your logic professor. <laughs> you know, he could like speak and see, see, but, uh, oh, mine was no, close no. to that. Mine was Boris Karloff is who I'd like uh, to bring yeah. back because, you know, he died in 69. He was, he, you know, he lived long enough to see the popularity of the Universal Monsters because obviously in the 60s, you know, the Universal Monsters were huge. Still, yeah. so he, you know, he got to see the success of it, but I would love to bring him back so that he could see that even in 2022, the character is still popular and that his, That's... That his image is still everywhere and it still defines the role. Like I would love for him to know that. That's pretty good. Yeah. yeah, I mean, think about it. Like now, he could come back now, and they have yet to build the theme land that's coming. Exactly. <laughs> about I the mean, Universal how cool that, like, I, how cool And he just seems like a there's cool like guy. even a future for it. It's not just like that. It's back now. There's even a future, yeah, like future yeah, for it's it still, in still coming. So I, I would love. I just love to interview him, and and you know, he seemed like a cool guy from watching that documentary, which everybody should go check out that documentary on him. It's on Shutter, um, but. Uh, I, I just think that would be a cool one. My my runner up was Wes Craven because I think he was gone way too soon, and uh, I just think he had so much more to offer before he before he died. So uh, that that would have been like my kind of runner up pick. But I went with, I went with old Boris because he's been gone the longest. Yeah, I I mean, well, I was joking with the you know the whole Bella goes, but yeah, I mean, like I th- I think more of a of a. I'm going to think of, I know this may sound like a cheat answer, but I'm thinking more of like a group thing. So like any of those, like that, that group, you know, I mean, obviously while well, Rico Browning is still alive, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. he's so, um, but like, you know, like all everyone else that we, we like, like, I love the whole like group of them to come back, you know, I mean, is that, it's kind of a cheat. I know. Cause it's not one person. And the question did say one. Yeah. 
Um, but I, you know, I guess maybe I would, I might go to with, with Craven also because, you know, of, of like, not only did he inspire, uh, you know, you know, a whole, like this, you know, this incredible villain of stuff, of, you know, f- that's become a horror icon still now with that. And there hasn't even been a movie from it in how many years now? I mean, granted yeah. it was not a well-received one, but like, and so I, yeah, I, I would have to say him, I think. I don't know. Ian, it's hard to pick. It's I'm never. I'm, I can never pick anything. So yeah. today I agonize over everything. I, mean, I thought of so. Vincent Price would be another one. Oh maybe. yeah, yeah. So. Well, he technically was in that group because remember he was in the, what was he in the second Invisible Man movie? Yeah, so. true, true. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, there's there's a lot of them. I, I think I'd have to go back to the. I think I'd have to go back to the 30s and 40s though for to pick somebody that I really want to talk to now. Um, yeah, and pick their brain. And let them know how much they're still influencing the industry, and and how much they're still appreciated. So that that was a good good question. That one that one had to think yeah. about a little bit, but I thought about it a little bit before the show, so I kind of skipped ahead and and had an answer ready. So it caught Brian off guard a little bit, but um, yeah. yeah. So that was cool to uh, finally get a regular episode under our belt, Brian. Yeah, I know. It's 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 like I I mean technically what in reality it's been three months. It feels like 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 seven or eight. Yes. I don't know why. <laughs> it does. It does. Uh but I, I'm glad to get back to the, the regular format. I really miss the first chop because I've watched a lot of movies. Yeah. And you know, the first chop was traditionally if we weren't featuring a film, we could at least say, Hey, I saw this cool movie and, and I just miss being able to do that. So we're gonna get back on that train. Especially once uh once uh, October wraps up and we can kind of do our horror challenge recap, I'll really be able to go into some of the stuff I saw that I really liked. I know if you keep a eye out on our social media, I've been posting a movie a day that I watched for the horror challenge. And I'll do one every day through the uh, end of October. So you kind of get an idea of what I've watched, but we'll, we always like to do a recap episode where we kind of pick out what, what were our gems, what were our duds, that kind of thing. Yeah. Well, and it's funny too because you're doing it like you you've like w- bunched them up and watched a bunch, but are just releasing it one a day, and I'm doing it like the opposite. I'm kind of doing it like I'm watching it in chunks, yeah, and then I'm like do, but then I'm just like also releasing it and ch- like the tweeting about it in chunks yeah. and stuff. So it's like I just like I like literally the other the whole weekend I I went through I think six or I think six or seven movies or something like that, and it's just but I waited to the end of each day because I you know sometimes I want to just get to the next movie. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, we will see you back here next week, uh, and uh, we got we got a lot of good stuff coming up. Um, we got some yes. great interviews coming up. Of course, of course, like we said at the top of the show, we got the Halloween Ends Roundtable coming up. So plenty to look forward to, even as we start winding down haunt season. Yes, and we'll talk to you later. Stay away. Yeah. Stay away from those puzzle boxes. I've got one on my shelf nice. right here that I'm kind of eyeing. It's looking a little suspicious. Oh boy. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.